everyone and welcome back to Cram Farm. Today I wanted to take you on a garden tour and kind of show you what we put in, what's growing so far, and give you an update on just kind of what we started in March, um, things we did in April, and what we've done since May started let you see how everything is starting to come together in the garden. So my very first bed that we started in the spring was this bed of potatoes and you can see that my potatoes are very happy here. I've never planted potatoes here before. I forgot um, that you planted potatoes. Which you want to alter, I mean, rotate your crops um, regularly. So these are potatoes. This is pepper crust. Um, that's actually spicy. It is kind of spicy. I let you taste something the other day, didn't I? <laughs> it's pretty good when you first start chewing it and then all of a sudden it gets a little bit of a spice. little bit of a peppery flavor after you start chewing it. Um, you'll see some, so I did put some seeds in um, a little later, and so this is some dino kale coming up. Here's some other dino kale. And then this is potatoes, potatoes, and I have hilled bug bites. Yep, that's a piece of oregano. Mm. Can I eat it? Sure. Yep, smells like oregano. Alright, well eat it. Eat it. Smell it. Let me smell. Yep, you want to chew it up? So this is one good thing about having having um, food in the garden that you're not spraying and they can grab it right off and eat it. Um, and I don't have to worry about it. So this and is- the tomatoes you planted. Yeah, so these are potatoes. In between the potatoes, you can see um, this is some of the dino kale that I started in my greenhouse and just planted in between here. And it is extremely happy and I can't wait. There's a little bit to start. Mm, it has good flavor. Start trying some of that. So potatoes again. Wait, you can eat the leaves off of it? Well, you can, but we usually let it get a little bit bigger before we start taking some of it off. Um, here is some rainbow can Swiss chard in here. Can I try Which one? actually, now that these potatoes yeah, have gotten... Can I sure. Now the potato... Well, that's a potato. Don't eat the potato. So now that the um, potatoes have gotten so big... What is it? That's kale. Oh. Um, the rainbow Swiss chard might not do as well. I might plant some more over on the end. Um, you can see where we did throw in lots of rabbit manure and fur from where she just had her babies and all. So that is giving lots of good nutrients to the soil and potatoes oh, yeah. are obviously loving it there. That kale is just tastes good. You like it? You like kale. Mm -hmm. And the kale is so good for you. Lots of vitamins and minerals there. Mm. So potatoes, kale, and some rainbow Swiss chard in this bed. Now this is my bed and these two oregano plants, this one and that one, overwintered. Um, so, and they are just huge. I'm gonna, and I actually have already. This um, is huge. I know, I have pulled some up out of the bed already. Um, it will stay huge if you don't cut it back some. So this is the very first bed. Well, actually this is probably the first bed I planted. This is um, spinach. See my spinach there. These are beets, lettuce, more beets. Um, I did throw a kale in here and some rainbow Swiss chard in here because I had a few extra that I, um, from the greenhouse. Um, more golden beets here. This is cilantro. We're going to make tacos this weekend. Use some of that. Use, cilantro? Yeah, use some in our guacamole. These are radishes. I spell that. The kids have loved. Look at that big one, Abby. The kids have loved coming out here and pulling up radishes. Oh, that's huge. I know. Yeah, pull it. You can go ahead and pull it up. It's huge. Pull it up, show it to oh, us. Oh, look how big it is. Yeah, we it's probably left that one a little bush. bit too. Yeah, we left that one a little bit too long. That's okay though. You know what? You can give it to the chickens, the ducks, um, and then more oregano here. So now we're over and look at the trellis that I started when I did my squash and cucumber companion planting video. And if you haven't seen that, I will link it below for you to see. But this is, um, is it ready to bloom? you can see the beans that I went around and planted on the outside of this bed. The beans are coming up. This is good. I'm glad you like that kale. We've got um, squash and zucchini in here. These are some radishes still. Um, there's still some carrots in here. Apparently they were left from last fall. But that's okay. They will um, keep on growing here. Yeah. They'll be fine. More beans. Um, on our trellis here on the other side, you will see um, we have started... Um, there is a pole bean coming up, an Armenian cucumber. Here are some nasturtiums. Now when these bloom out and the flowers will be really good in salads. What are those? A rat, little tiny radish. Oh! Coming up. That's very tiny. Um, Armenian cucumber. 
more radishes. Oh, and here is my first little Chinese red noodle bean. Abby, remember these from last year? Yeah, I remember them. What did they do? Uh, I forgot. What did they do, remember? Oh, they hang down from up there. Yeah, they did, they were cool. What color were they, remember? They're kind of a purpley, really dark red. And they would get really long. Every time for us to pull this up, I'll... You can pull it if you want. Ow! <laughs> We've got some. So, yeah, so radishes, we'll get these little, let me see if I can get it on video. We'll get these little tiny spikes on here. Um, Ow! When they're big. So you won't actually eat these greens. You could um, juice the greens of a radish and um, use them that way. But um, we give them to our chickens and all the other animals can um, eat on those. So let's see. Um, there are a few Cosmos coming up in that corner. Here are more. Oh look. More beans coming up. Beans. Bush. These are just um, blue lake bush beans. These are Boston uh, pickling cucumbers coming up here. There should be some more pole beans coming up soon. Radishes. So this bed is looking really good. We should start to see some marigolds coming up in the middle here. Marigolds? Uh -huh. Yep, I planted some. I think that might be a few of them there. Mm. Um, so this bed is looking really good too. So these are our two that were trellis. And then this, I cannot wait. This is one of the, this is the first time that I have planted garlic. And you plant garlic in the fall. So you wait for a few frost on the ground. And then you put your garlic in. A and peel. Yeah, you can see where we throw banana peels and stuff in over the winter. But this is my garlic bed, and I cannot wait to pull this up, and it's really not going to be that long. Um, June, so like next month, we should be able to start harvesting this garlic, and I just can't wait. It has done wonderfully here, and garlic, it actually does really well. Like if you leave it three years is when it starts doing really, really well. Yeah, I did plant some more radishes on the end down there with the garlic. So, we've got Buttercup. We brought Buttercup up to let her um, graze a little grass tonight. Um, we've got chickens we're moving around the yard. Oh, here are our new friends in the garden. They are, this is their little area they're in charge of. They will be excellent at eating bugs, but they will not bother my plants and they can't get in my raised beds. So, yeah, yep, apple tree we're going to be moving. So there go our little ducks. I know, they're so funny to watch. <laughs> they go by so fast. Oh, I forgot, we did plant some zinnias that are starting to come up in this corner over here so we will have lots of flowers as well as vegetables coming up in um, our garden all right here is some purple opal basil this is my other potato bed there's a bean coming up there we've got some marigolds in here oh look we've got some weeds i need to come in here and pull up more beans i don't see my potatoes poking through in this bed yet but and then there's another purple opal basil you can see all of that um nice rabbit manure now, the one thing about rabbit manure is that it's cold, meaning that it is not going to burn your plants like chicken manure, and you don't really have to let it sit like you would chicken or um, cow manure. So, rabbit poop, you can stick straight in your garden, and when it rains on it, it kind of makes like a compost tea, and all those nutrients just soak into the soil, and your um, plants will love it. So, that is like one it. thing... You're still eating kale. That is one thing I really, really, really like about having rabbits. We always have good compost um, that is ready for the garden and doesn't have to actually sit before you can Whoa. use it. Careful there, girl. So let's go take a look at the cattle panels and things we have put in there. All right, so let's start up here at this cattle panel now. This is the one where we just put tomatoes in. Um, a couple of days ago so we have tomatoes eight tomatoes down here on the other side we have peppers we have cucumbers we have squash and zucchini we have several places where we have flowers put in um, basil so but the whole front here is tomatoes and on the back side we have peppers um, that's a cucumber oh. squash more peppers, Is this a um, sweet basil. Yeah. So we still got to put some wood chips down here. We still got to put wood chips down here, but otherwise planting wise, it's all on the ground. On the other side is the 32 feet we did of more peppers, squash, flowers. It doesn't look much different because it was just done the other day. 
um, tomatoes, peppers, squash. So all the way down. And then the far end is where we put in um, pole beans and then the two hills. I don't know why they put two poles here. The kids have been playing. Two hills of corn. So we're waiting for that corn to come up before we put in the three sisters, which is where our squash and more beans will go. Hey, look, I got some blueberries coming. This is one of our um, blueberry plants that will be moving over to the new orchard area, but we won't be moving them to fall. So we have got still our pole beans here. Let me take you over to the other area. So more pole beans, just waiting for them to start coming up. Some little coxcomb flowers here. I've got several places up there of them also. And then this is a mound that we did um, just off of the little flower box there. But this is a mound of that has three watermelon. This is our, um, we have a Yamato cream, an orange glow, and a crimson sweet over here. And then this is the flower box that we just put in this weekend. And we've got some sunflowers. Um, and then Cosmos that we had started in the greenhouse. And then I have sprinkled seeds of Cosmos and Xenias all throughout this bed. So it will bring in not lots of pollinators and give some pretty color to the garden area. So I am pretty convinced that even though my garden is not what I wanted it to be this year, just because of um, the delay with stumping and not having my raised beds up like I wanted. I am now convinced that if you are determined and you want to grow food for your family, you will find a way. So whether it is putting up some temporary areas with cattle panels, um, putting some mounds in the ground. So this is also just like we did in the front with newspaper on the bottom, soak that newspaper down, put in your good dirt and then plant. That's all that is there. And being that this is going to be garden space, it doesn't bother me that I've got newspaper and dirt here on the ground. I'm going to use all that in my garden anyway um, in the future because once the shed is moved, this is still going to be garden space. So any good dirt, any amendments I do to the soil in here, even though it's right on the ground, is still going to benefit me in the future. So I have no problem putting this in the ground. Now you may be looking at my backyard and thinking, hey, you're running out of space. Well, we have lambs mowing the grass over there. We have the cow up here. She's only up here just because I'm getting ready to milk her. And um, so I brought her up here and let her eat a little bit of this area. We are moving chickens across the grass over here. Um, we have meat rabbits over here. We have our, chick our meat chickens that we are growing over here. We have egg layers. We have egg layers in the pasture. You can grow food on not a lot of space. And I'm convinced that if you want to, and if you were serious about growing food for your family, you're going to find a way. The first part of that though is to try. Try, try, try. You're gonna make mistakes. You know what? I've probably made some mistakes in this garden this year. I'm not gonna say that I haven't. In past years, I've made tons of mistakes. You learn every single time. I'm gonna tell you, um, this weekend, we lost one of our bucks from um, our rabbits. And rabbits are new to us. Um, we don't know if he got too hot. We don't know if it was just his time to go. We don't know what happened with him. But like I'm saying is you are going to learn every single thing that you do and everything that you try. You know, we lost a buck and Riley lost his rabbit and he was heartbroken. Actually, Abby cried for an entire day um, from losing that buck. But you're going to learn. And so we learned, oh, maybe he got too hot. We did actually move the hutches to another area now so that maybe um, the sun was getting on him. Yesterday and today, it's been in the 80s, so we did give them um, like frozen water to lay up against in case the others were getting hot. You know, he wasn't even a year old yet, so it's just kind of uncommon for him to die that quickly. But, you know, maybe we made a mistake, but maybe we learned something off of that too, and it'll make us better rabbit um, owners in the future. The exact same thing goes with your garden. Um, make mistakes, it is okay. You will learn every step of the way and it's just gonna improve your gardening every single year. So I wanna do more of these garden tours. I want you all to see how the garden progresses through the year, see the mistakes that I make, see things that I'm learning from what we're doing out here. Um, and hey, you all have probably been gardening longer than me, some of you. Give, share tips below, you know, comment. 
Um, do you think there's something I should have done differently? You know, what are you doing in your garden? Tell me what you're planting. We can all learn together. And I love that we have this platform where everyone can share and can learn. So I want to do several more of these and just show you what the garden looks like as it progresses through the year. And as we keep putting more food in and developing more places to put food, um, I'm going to share all that with you too. So don't forget to give our video a like, hit the subscribe button on your way out, and we'll see you next time right here at Cram Farms. Y'all have a great day. Say bye, buttercup. Moo.